Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. How are you doing today? This is going to be an extra special discussion because not only are we going to talk about a huge city in the United States, but we're also going to welcome, congratulate, and thank Emil for adding content to the course, How to Get Started One Rental at a Time. If you've been watching us for any length of time, you know that he does out-of-state investing. If you know my story, you know I don't. And one of the things that I love is when experts uh, that I have on this show step up and go, you know what? I'd love to share my story, my experience. So Emil has just signed up to create a brand new section called Out of State Investing. So buddy, thank you, thank you, thank you. Absolutely. And again, I won't, I won't consider myself an expert, but- You no, have done it more than me. Years. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, I can I can definitely tell people what not to do. That, that's that's for sure. So yeah, what I'm in, what I'm envisioning is just that things not to do, things that caught you, um, you know, some things that worked. Right, you can sort of celebrate what worked. I, I think there's a general opinion that out of state investing is easy. Uh, there's a general opinion that you can't go wrong, uh, and I've seen plenty of plenty of people make mistakes. So I, I look forward to the creation. It'll just be one man's opinion. I do envision having other experts add their experience, but uh, given I have zero, four or five is more than me. So uh, I think it'll be valuable content. So thanks again for doing that. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. All right. So that's out of the way. We've blown up your ego. What city are we going to talk <laughs> about today? <laughs> All right. We got Houston. So another Texas town. Oh, Houston, Texas. Everything's bigger in Houston or everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. So <laughs> yes, sir. Our MSA name for Houston. <laughs> Let's get in the theme. Let's get, you know, come there on. Go. Let's go. Let's get a little Texas right. thing. <laughs> there we go. All right. MSA name. We got Houston, the Woodlands, Sugarland, Texas. It's funny. Actually, I, I sorry to digress. I actually remember going to, going to Texas uh, back during the peak when houses in Fresno were ridiculous. And I never looked okay. at Houston. I looked at uh, Austin first, Plano or Dallas, and even San Antonio, but we actually never made it to Houston. So this will be interesting. I remember you talking about um, looking at Texas, but not pulling the trigger. When were you looking in Austin? Like what year? Oh, it had to be 07. Cause we were, I was trying to find that eighth house. It wasn't working. Everybody says, go to Texas, go to Texas. I had a buddy who bought two in mm -hmm. Dallas. So I remember spending about a week or 10 days just bouncing around different cities. So I think it was 07. Okay. All right. Yeah. Probably would have been, I mean, 13, 14 years ago, Austin yeah. wasn't quite on the map like it is today, but you're doing awesome in Fresno. So yeah, it, it all worked out, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Our greatest, greater MSA population. We got 7.1 million. Oh, it's bigger than I thought. Houston. I was going for 4 million, 7 million people. Yeah, they are. They're number five in the country. Wow. That's the biggest we've Huge. talked about so far. I th Chicago, I think, was num n oh, okay. in the top three or four, but okay. Houston, right up there. Surprising wow. to me that it made the top five. I have Seven no idea. million. Wow. Okay, so that'll be interesting. Yeah, and that's covering ten thousand and sixty-two square miles. The MSA size. It's actually not that big considering seven million people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right. Our city population. So the city of Houston clocks in at two point three million. Which is good for number four. Even bigger than I thought. I, I thought they'd be pushing a million, maybe a million too. Wow. Houston is gigantic. Yeah, big city. It's a big city, man. That's yeah. a lot of people. And yeah, it's crazy. And that covers 638 square miles. Again, that's relatively small for a couple million people. Okay. Yep. So our MSA population growth at 7.1 million. If you look back from 2010 to 2019, 19.4% growth. Wow. So if you round to 20%, that's over a million people. Yeah. That's a, a lot, lot of, of people. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, what is that? Go ahead. I, I guess I got to do some math. That's crazy. Yeah. Their city population growth since 2010. So looking at that same 20, uh, same timeline, 2010 to 2019, 10.3% growth in the city. That's roughly 300 to people a day over 10 years. That's amazing. Wild. That's, that's, yeah. that's nuts. Okay. Well, 
That's yep. why real estate in Texas is so damn expensive these days. <laughs> we just we just get that punchline out of the way right now. It's expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. Every single Texas, you know, big city Texas we talk about the double digit growth in population, and all this stuff. So wow. that explains things. That's crazy. Uh, our unemployment, according to BLS data, this was the shocker: eight percent currently. I would not have get. Wow, there's all kinds of stuff I don't know about Texas. Eight uh, percent. I guess that's a lot of oil and gas. Maybe that's a that's a pretty healthy. That's that's much higher than average. Right. Hmm. Yeah, the average. I think we've been covering six, 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 one, six, four, something like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, our median household income. Any guesses? Well, you got seven million people, so sixty-four. We're at 52, Ooh. and this, this is 2019. So I'm sure yeah. that's inflated now, but 2019. Yeah, but that's much lower than I expected. 52? Wow. I mean, 52, we saw in Tennessee, or I mean, we've seen, we've seen 50s in lots of what I'll call cheaper markets. That's a pretty low right. average income. I mean, top five yep. city. That's pretty interesting. Okay. All right. 52. Yeah, Shocking. Definitely. Their number of units of housing stock, 2.7 million, and 36% of that is renter occupied. So a pretty healthy renter population there. Yeah. Again, you'd almost expect that, right? With um, which I'm sure is high price appreciation and low incomes. You kind of get an affordability problem, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. But the, the good news, or I don't know, depending on how you look at it, single family permits in 2020, according to John Burns data, 47,858. So that's one of the bigger ones we've covered. Yeah, it's Usually a bigger one. Like, they probably yeah. could absorb hundreds of thousands, but yeah, I mean, 40,000 right. is bigger than most. Yeah, exactly. Especially the ones we've been covering. And that mm -hmm. is up 21.1% year over year. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, so moving into price and rent data, home price rent data. Any guesses on our entry level single family home price? Well, I was nervous. I had one number in mind, but now that you have an average income of 52, God, I'm going to go 165. Higher than that. We're 209, 300. Oh, you definitely have an affordability problem. That's why you have such a big renter population. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And that is up 11.7% since 2019. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Our existing median home price in Houston is 262,000. Yeah. Okay. And then if, if we look at our median single family rent on that entry level home of 209,000, 1,816. Yeah, that's, that's okay. And then, but if you remember, if it's an investment property, you got to pay that ridiculous state real, real estate tax, right? That's, that's why we said no 15 years ago, or whatever it was is, is, we kept looking at that yearly adjustment going cash flow might be pretty good today, but man, cash flow could go, go away. That's why we ended up saying right. no. Something, something very important uh, to consider as you're, especially if you're an out of state investor, like you're looking at Texas and you know, it's not too far off the 1% rule, 1800, 209, all this appreciation yeah. and people Boy. coming into Woo. the state. If you don't count taxes, you're going to get shocked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Big, big thing to consider. I, I, I actually know a couple of investors, I mentioned it in my intro, who went to Texas early and they were, they were loving life. But I, I talked to one like last year and they're like, my cash flow is gone. I'm like, what do you mean your cash flow is gone? Well, rents are up, but real estate taxes, real estate taxes have doubled mm -hmm. for him and just ate up all his cash flow. I'm like, ouch, that, that would hurt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for everyone who's you know dog in California, you got Prop Thirteen. Prop Thirteen, your, baby. Property taxes ain't changing. So ain't there you changing. Go. Uh, all right, going back to Texas, we got our single-family gross yield clocking at eight point two percent. Yeah, it's going to be below ten for sure. Yeah, eight percent. Yeah. And then our home occupancy rate, uh, this was a little bit low, little lower than I expected, I guess. Ninety point two percent. So on the lower end of markets we've covered. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. All right, moving on to our qualitative stuff. So employment stats, our major industries in Houston include aerospace, aerospace and aviation, advanced manufacturing, energy, life sciences, and biotechnology. 
uh, and transportation and logistics. Yeah, I'm still thinking about that. There's two things that have got me so far about Houston. Well, actually, three things. One is that an unemployment rate, right? That mm-hmm. that's a pretty diverse economy you just ran through. But seven million people, I guess not. I mean, that's that's a big number. And then income, fifty-two grand. Those, those numbers, I'm still shocked by those. So, anyways, I digress. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Uh, largest employers in Houston. We got Memorial Hermann Health Systems, hmm. University of Texas, MD Anderson, United Airlines, the Methodist Hospital System, and Exxon Mobil. So oil and yeah. gas, there you go. Oil and gas, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the couple of times I called on Houston, which was in my territory as a sales guy for more than a decade, it was all oil and gas. But that's hmm. a decade. Oh, it's probably 15 years ago now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then the last thing to highlight here in employment stats, we got Houston ranks number four among U.S. metro areas in Fortune 500 headquarters. So that was that was pretty interesting. And the yeah. reasons for that, they got a pro-growth government, low costs and regulations, and no corporate or personal income tax at the state level. Yes, yes, uh, I, I've seen many memes about uh, Cuomo and uh, uh, Newsom being the number one realtors for Texas. So yes. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah they are yeah they are <laughs> that's a good one I, I haven't seen those but that's great. oh i'll forward it to you they're hilarious <laughs> actually one guy created a trophy gavin newsom number one texas agent i thought that was awesome <laughs> god yeah that's kind of accurate too <laughs> absolutely uh, all right so our rental and real estate market stats we got uh according to zillow home values in houston have gone up 29 percent over the last five years and that's as of April, 2021. Yeah. You know, that's not, that's not, that's not crazy. 29% in five years. It maybe has seen a big jump in the last year. So maybe it's missing some of that jump, but 29 is not crazy. I mean, we, and we've talked about markets that are 50 or 60%. Right. Right. So, I think they just started much lower. So yeah, it's easier for them. Yeah. To percentage. Appreciate. Yeah. yeah right. You're right. Okay. But still, still. All right. Home values in Houston. This is also Zillow data. So home values in Houston increased 6.3% last year. Again, not, not, not great compared to we've covered double digits Yeah, and they're projected to grow another 9.9% during the next 12 months. Oh, so maybe they're catching it. Maybe they're playing catch up. Okay. Uh, of the, so this is switching over to realtor.com data of the 82 neighborhoods in Houston university place is the most expensive with a median listing price of 895,000. Okay. Yeah. And then on the other end, we got our most affordable neighborhood in Houston to buy a home is called Acres Home, where the median listing price is 149700 oh, That's quite a delta. I mean, we've seen some closer gaps. That's basically a million to sub 150. That's, that's a pretty big gap or range, I guess I should yep. say range. Yep. Um, and then f- finishing off with our fun facts, quality mm-hmm. of life, we got... Our cost of living in Houston is less than other cities in Texas, including Dallas and Austin. And that's according to NerdWallet's cost of living calculator. Makes sense. In 2019, Forbes ranked Houston as one of the best places for business and careers in the U.S. And then, <laughs> Not uh, sure I agree with that with 8% unemployment and 52% income or 52K income, but okay, Fortune, you might have missed that one. <laughs> Yeah, that, well, that was Forbes in 2019. Yeah, so no, maybe, agreed. Maybe we're on to something in 2019. Yeah, but. yeah maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, U.S. News and World Report rated Houston as the number 27th best place to live and 22 best place to retire. Huh. Makes sense. Is that what you got? That's it. That's all we got yeah. for Houston. So, folks, again, do me do us a favor. Go ahead and check out Roofstock. There's a link below. Find out what markets Roofstock covers. And if you find one that you like, leave a comment below. Uh, Emil and I talk weekly, Mondays at 9.30 Pacific. So if you leave a comment below and it's a city that Roofstock covers, there's a good chance we'll cover it for you. And oh, by the way, there's an entire playlist called Roofstock because I think we've done what, 20 to 25 cities already? So we may have already yeah. talked about your city. <laughs> All right, Emil, thank you very much for doing this. And again, thank you for being our first uh, I'll call you expert uh, to add content for out-of-state investing. That is, uh, that's a missing component of my course because 
I don't have any, I don't, I've never done it. So uh, I won't create content for stuff I don't know. So thank you very much. Happy to, absolutely. Thanks, buddy.